Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Feral Race versus Unity. We were to go racing with B-Class Classic DTM cars. I went for sort of the, the 92 to 95-ish season vehicles. So we have a few interesting inclusions in this uh, particular round at the front. And amazingly, everybody made it through turn one cleanly at Hockenheim. This is an incredibly rare occurrence. A few people ended up out a little bit wide on the curves, but everybody actually made it through turn one cleanly. Didn't last particularly long, a few bumps through these next quarters, but still, the <laughs> getting all through turn one is quite, uh, is quite impressive. As we run down this uh, back straight, a few people were having to, uh, to take avoiding action. The vehicle we're following at the moment, the BMW here, went flying past an Alfa Romeo. The Alphas struggled with straight line speed around a very tight twisty circuit. They can be pretty good cars, but uh, around here, yeah, the Alphas were struggling with, uh, with a lack of straight line speed. The Carltons, on the other hand, they had much of the, uh, the straight line speed, and this BMW was finding himself... Uh, having a little bit of trouble actually getting a, uh, a pass affected on the uh, on the Lotus. It's got so much straight line speed, and while it's slow around the course of laps, struggles through the corners. Uh, you could just out accelerate the BMW constantly, and was making making life a little bit of a nuisance. The BMW did just about manage to squeak past, but it only last until the next straight. A little bit further back, and a Mustang was uh, was fending off. It was about around about fourth, fifth place at this stage of the race. Was trying to fend off a BMW. BMW here having the the better of the straight line speed, but the cars that were built in that manner often struggled a little bit more through the corner. I mean, B class, you can get plenty of parts onto onto your vehicle. So yeah, there we were seeing some uh, interesting compromises with the builds. You see here, the BMW was really struggling to get out of the hairpin. The Mustang now right back behind him. But the BMW has that acceleration. He can pull it a little bit further away. But whether it's enough as we come into the next corner, it isn't quite. The Mustang can have a big dive up the inside. Make sure he gets the car stopped and he will move up a position for now. And you can see in the background, there was quite a lot of cars in a big group. Uh, in these early parts of the race. Now, one thing that we did expect, we expected the 190 Mercedes to be very, very quick, and that wasn't something that really, uh, really happened. Uh, I think a lot of people that thought the 190s would be quick then went and built an M3, so all the M3s ended up being quick, so there wasn't actually that many uh, fast 190s. There was one in the middle of this little BMW battle group, uh, towards the, the midfield here. The Mercedes, I think, was trying was, was trying to find a way past. Cuts back to the inside of the BMW here to uh, get the position. There's another M3 thinking about having a big dive up the inside. This is a horrible corner. Try and get an overtake done. There's an M3 to run a little bit wide through that very fast corner, which is not where you want to be. Mercedes goes to the outside, trying to affect a move at the hairpin, but he's left the door wide open for the BMW to come back up the inside. They're all just about fit. There's millimeters between all three of these cars. They managed to get back in line quite cleanly though. The BMW's now trying to go around the outside. Runs out of road there though. Not quite enough grip to uh, make that one stick. And as we come down the, uh, the start finish line, it's all very close between <laughs> these cars. BMW's trying, trying to make a little bit of a push into the first corner. They all bounce over the curbs. I, of course, would go for a Lotus Carlton. And these were some of the fastest vehicles into straight line. I was being hounded by an M3, but the M3 just couldn't find a way past because I could make up so much time on these straights and the Alpha was having trouble. The <laughs> Carlton absolutely breezes past the Alfa Romeo in a in a straight line as we come up towards the hairpin. I'm past, I can move across and go back to uh, to defend it. The Carlton was a little bit of a difficult car to uh, to drive certainly it wasn't a terrible car though and that's that straight line speed made it a very difficult car to overtake it's very very tough to overtake a carlton and the carltons found it relatively easy to overtake other cars because we could just wait until we got to a straight and find a way past there was an interesting <laughs> reversal battle uh, going on here between a carlton 
and an M3, obviously very different built cars. The Carlton, this one here, was much better through the corners, got himself to the inside of the hairpin after the BMW left the door a little bit too far open as we round up towards this uh, this final final corner here. And the BMW does drop back a, a fair little way as we round the final turn, and then we come to a straight middle. The Carlton may have dipped a wheel on the dirt a little bit on the outside, and here comes the BMW power as well clear by the time we get towards the first corner. That's not a particularly long straight either. Uh, they both managed to run a little too deep into that uh, first corner, but uh, yeah, the, <laughs> an interesting little reversal of, uh, of roles in that particular battle. You could get the M3s to be very, very fast cars in a straight line. If you did, though, you often compromised on something else with the build. At the front, though, speaking of the M3s, they were pretty damn dominant in this race it was m3s one and two and they'd led from the start and absolutely vanished away at the front of the field yes the good group of us have been fighting further back but uh, even if i had been running in clean air i wasn't going to be as quick as the m3s here they were indeed uh, very very quick cars so yeah they would take a relatively simple first and second a relatively lonely race as well for a first and second Third place was a little bit more up for grabs. Carlton was currently sitting in third, which we always like to uh, to see as we came onto the final lap. But he was being hounded by a BMW. Had been the entire race. I think the uh, the turquoise BMW had been hounding him for a while. Made a mistake. Now that it was the turn of the uh, Jägermeister car to try and find a way past, and the Carlton was defending heavily into this final corner. Just runs in a little bit too deep. The BMW can go for the cutback, gets his car passed, and there isn't enough straights for the Carlton to do anything about it. So it would be a 1-2-3 for the BMWs. Carlton in 4th, BMW in 6th, Mike Carlton in 7th, I think there's another BMW in 8th. Yeah, the, the M3s, they did slightly dominate. Also, I love the driver tars continuing the battle there uh, after, the, after the race has finished. Race number two, and we would go to the Yas Marina North circuit. I tend to use, I think it's the south layout of the Yas Marina I tend to use. I do quite like this layout, though, for generating some interesting racing. Again, turn one, everybody managed to just about make it through. As after that, things, you see, a little bit of a little bit of a laggy bump between me and the BMW. Unfortunately, the BMW uh, just runs out of road, and everybody's... Uh, most part made it through a few cars were taking to uh, doing some avoiding action again we had another poor alpha remote this was not a good track for the alphas around here this was not a good track for the 155s they uh, very very much struggle to get a huge amount of straight line speed out of them and there are some really long straights in this circuit so yeah the uh 155s are always likely to be in a little bit of trouble come this circuit uh, it was plenty busy enough on this opening lap as everybody is scrambling and fighting position we come down this really long straight this is where the Carltons of course excel there were a few other very fast cars though in this uh, in this lobby depending on how they were built I was closing up on the back of the Mustang but the Mustang will go defensive into the uh, into the really tight sort of chicane hairpin area and the Mustang is that little bit better on the brakes the Carlton the other Carlton's now trying to stick his nose up the inside there's BMWs behind there's Mustangs everybody's looking trying to find a way past one another in this uh, very very busy first lap as I said you know the Alphas were very much getting mugged on the straight that one <laughs> Now on there getting past both sides, one incredibly fast BMW has gone soaring off towards the hairpin, but he's not quite sure where to break the other BMW better on the brakes. The Alpha's having a really big dive. Of course, uh, while they're going to be compromised on straight line speed through the turns, the Alphas can do some impressive, impressive stops. And of course, the Alphas are four-wheel drive, and uh, they can get some impressive traction out of the corners. Yeah, the, the blue M3 here, with all of the speed, was again trying to make the most of it as they run down towards turn one, but he's going to be stuck on the outside. It's a long way to go around the outside of turn one, and you've got to be aware of the curbs on the outside. The curbs can be a little bit nasty. Uh, this guy here runs a little bit too wide through the first quarter, just about gets away with it. Now again, he's going to be dropping perhaps that uh, blue BMW a little bit through the next corner, but then we're coming down a straight, and with the Carlson getting a little bit involved, it's almost three wide <laughs> into this chicane down here. Carlson runs in a little too deep, can't get it stopped as he tries to get back on the track safely. The BMW, uh, the blue BMW will take avoiding action, get up the inside, and uh, well, we saw the straight line speed. What's going to happen when <laughs> we leave this corner? Although a very, very big slide there from the M3 won't have helped his cause this particular lap. Where the most exciting race was going on, well, this was around the fifth place. 
at uh, this stage in the race and well as you can see there was rather a large group of vehicles fighting a couple of mustangs a couple of carltons i think there's an m3 involved it might have been mercedes at the tail of this group for a little while the mustangs were having a really tough time shaking the carltons uh, admittedly this one had managed to find his way ahead of me but he had to try and make the most of it because as soon as we came through the chicanes and around the hairpin onto the straight the Carltons were so phenomenally fast that we had a little bit of a Carlton train going on that uh, I was trying to lead the way of although while I was much quicker than the Mustangs and I was nice and close he ran a little too wide out of the hairpin uh, the Alphas again similar story the Alpha really struggling for that as straight lines we do feel quite sorry for them as again another one just gets completely and utterly mugged I mean we were quite a long way back as we came around turn one and turn two uh, and as we left the hairpin even but uh, that lack of straight line speed in the alpha was uh, causing them quite a bit of problems I was up the inside into the uh, hairpin the Mustang trying to get brave further back there was a Mustang up the inside of the Carlton they were all fighting two and three wide there was one alpha that was putting up a half decent fight in a straight line again you know depending on how you built them he just maxed out the power parts they could be relatively they kind of be okay they're going to be average it's very hard to make a, a power alpha essentially that would beat most of the other cars in a straight line you can kind of build them to keep up with cars in a straight line this one here like i was expecting the mercedes to completely utterly bugger off admittedly mercedes aren't the fastest cars in a straight line either but uh, this one was kind of doing his uh, doing his best to try and keep up with these mercedes as we come into the hairpin he tries to get himself up the inside a little bit of a <laughs> Little bit of a bump between the pair of them. Will he get up the inside in the final corner? Big slide from the Mercedes is not what he's going to be wanting to get through that corner. However, it does mean the Alpha is now going to be stuck on the outside. You can still see us lot fighting <laughs> up ahead of uh, this. The Alpha is stuck on the outside at uh, turn one. As I said, that's a really, really long way to go around the outside. He keeps his car there. He runs the risk of being on the curb, but it still puts him on the outside through the next part. He has to let off the, uh, the throttle there. I was continuing to lead the Mustangs and the, uh, the BMW. Unfortunately, my fellow Carlton was to uh, lag out. The Mustang found a way past, slightly forgot how long the Carlton was, slightly chopped the nose off, and uh, we very nearly had a big accident. Amazingly, despite some pretty decent speeds and some pretty heavy cornering going on there, the... Um we would all get through it in just about in one piece. I would come off worse, although the uh, the grey and turquoise Mustang would run wide out of that uh, out of that hairpin, and now we have the little drag race down the back straight. The M3 in this group was a pretty damn fast one in a straight line, pretty much the same speed as my Carlton as we come barreling along down here. Both of us pulling well past the Mustangs as we come under braking. Perhaps not quite what I was expecting. I thought the Mustangs may, again, admittedly depends on how they're built, the Mustangs may fare a little bit better in a, a straight line. I almost get double teamed by the Mustangs as one tries to go up the inside, one tries to go around the outside. I get forced out wide around this final corner. Don't quite have the grip to uh, get away with that. You've got to be really careful of the curbs here. Running running wide like that is uh, very easy to get yourself in trouble with these uh, rather bumpy curves we come up towards turn one i've got a mustang going around the outside he does a great job of keeping his car uh, alongside now we're going to give him a little bit of a uh, little bit of a bump drop down towards the next corner and this is where the carlton is going to struggle so if the mustangs can get ahead if they can get just a little bit more of a gap back to the uh, the lotus then they would stand a chance of uh, getting away at the front and guess what cars were leading the way it was some more bmw m3s again this kind of highlights the different different ways that you could build a, a bmw the turquoise car leading the way was a better car through the corner you can see it's got the forza aero parts on it while the vehicle giving chase did not I mean the turquoise car will get out of this corner a little bit quicker he made a little bit of a mistake coming into the chicane there he's managed to pull a gap problem is he hasn't got the straight line speed and as, as I said you know this is a, a pretty damn decent size straight if you can sit in the slipstream down here you've got a fantastic overtaking opportunity when you come to the end of it turquoise car goes defensive but there's nothing he can do about it his best bet would be perhaps to have a big dive under brakes if the car is good enough but the gray bmw knows what he's doing he gets it stopped nicely there is no real space for the turquoise car to a fight back as they run through the final corner again it's not all over yet as the <laughs> run both run a little bit wide bobbling across the curb you might be able to get up the inside into turn one if you're close enough but uh, yeah the turquoise car couldn't quite manage it 
And the poor, the poor Martini Alpha was, uh, yeah, struggling, falling through the field with their lack of straight line speed. Got two 190s leaving the hairpin. You can see the size of the gap he had to them as as the Alpha left the hairpin. And the BMWs, are, no, Mercedes, sorry, are both going to come flying past in a straight line. There is, yeah, not a huge amount that uh, the Alphas could, could really do at uh, this particular second. He tries to fight back on the outside at the hairpin, runs perhaps a little too deep, can't quite make it stick. Uh, around there goes for a little bit of cutback, but there's there's no real space. And then again, we're on to another little bit longer straight. They, yeah, we're not, uh, we're not ideally suited. I've never managed to make a 155. Or I have seen a very few fast 155s. I've personally never been able to build one that uh, was any good. There are some people that know the building magic for them particular cars. And still we were going three wide into the hairpin back here. I spent my entire race fighting with two Mustangs. The M3 would eventually bugger off at the front of this group. That was a very, very quick car. Uh, around here, I was still in the mix with these Mustangs as we came down the straight. I had to swap sides between them. There was a there was a Carlton's length gap in between them. And there goes the Lotus. Pretty decent straight line speed. And now the two Mustangs are going to go side by side into the hairpin. This time I got across to uh, defend my position to make sure we didn't get uh, completely swamped by Fords. When we're following around a little too deep in the braking zone, he would give up the position. He's fighting back on the inside. There's a tiny little tag between the pair of them. Both end up uh, out wide at the final corner. It was a fantastic battle. It was a huge amount of fun. That, uh, that battle. I imagine I must have quite frustrated the Mustangs with my, uh, my straight line speed. At the front, though, it was a little bit calmer. After a good close first few laps, the Grey M3, after taking the lead, would create just a little bit of a, of a safety margin back to the turquoise car. Again, it would be a 1-2-3 for the BMWs. A Mustang would come home in fourth, ahead of a BMW in fifth. Uh, yeah, the BMWs were very much, very much dominating. I think I ended up in sixth with my Carlton. Our final race. Now, this is where the Alphas may well shine. The Sebring Club Circuit in the pouring rain, of course. That four-wheel drive Alpha uh, would much prefer, uh, potentially at least, this circuit. Now, things went wrong big time into the first quarter. Having done so well uh, to the other two circuits, yeah, things went a little bit wrong. On uh, this one, a few cars ending up in a little bit of trouble at uh, turn one. All it takes is one car to miss their braking point and then everybody goes into the uh, grass. I was shunted straight off the uh, the track in that one. Uh, most of us managed to get away without too much damage, but uh, yeah, there was a fair bit of, uh, of rally cross. The rest of the field, well, it was again, as always, a quite a frantic opening lap with the, uh, the shuffling for positions. Now, as I said, the uh, the Alphas were expected to fare a little bit better around this circuit. They still had the lack of straight line speed, but uh, around here, that's not quite as important. There are a couple of long straights that this BMW here was trying to maximize, uh, but uh, on the most part, you know, you've got quite a lot of corners and quite a lot of traction zones, so that four-wheel drive would uh, come in handy. And of course, we've got the mighty puddle of doom to be. <laughs> this is always an interesting, always an interesting challenge when that is involved. Uh, in the end, the Alpha just pushed it a little too hard. <laughs> Under braking, ends up going playing in the, uh, the grass. That allows the BMW pass, allows my Carlton pass as well. While it might have been relatively sparsely populated at the front, further back, there's actually quite a lot of good, uh, good action going on here. This is a big group of cars. BMW, a couple of Alphas and Mercedes involved in this fluctuator. I think we've got to about five or six cars around this point at uh, one time here. I think it was a Martini Alpha with that little bit more straight line speed. Went to straight past this red car. The Mercedes again with that bit more straight line speed as well. Gets himself up the inside into turn one, but does he have the traction on the way out of it? He doesn't. The Alpha can keep hold of the position, but now we're coming down to another short straight. Mercedes is up alongside as we go towards the Puddle of Doom. Too wide through the Puddle of Doom is never a good idea. The Mercedes keeps his foot in though, even out wide with a wheel on the wet grass he goes for it gets his vehicle to the inside makes the position cleaner the alphas though going to cut back through the corner using that traction forces the mercedes across the puddle on the inside that slows the mercedes down a little bit and the alphas back past around the outside into this next corner so yeah you know these, these four-wheel drive alphas you could make the most of them get that traction out of some of the slower speed corners 
to uh, fend off vehicles. This was right at the back. This was the, pretty much the Battle of the Broken cars that had been <laughs> involved in incidents on lap one. It was an incredible battle as well for a while <laughs> between sort of five of them. I've no idea what levels of damage these cars had comparatively between them. There's no pit stop on the, the Sebring club circuit. So, yeah, if you got broken, you were going to have to uh, carry on. There's a Carlton playing in the grass. Never a good place to be playing in the grass out there as we all run down towards turn one. Very close between all of these. The Mustang <laughs> decides he's going up the inside with a little bump across the curb. Another Mustang. There's a big two-wheel moment as well. That is um, an unusual place to get a car so far on two wheels. Normally that curve there is the one that'll get them. But, uh, yeah, big two-wheel moment. Alpha sideways. Mustang sideways. Carlton's relatively controlled. Mustang at the back of the group is relatively controlled as well. Lotus is having a big dive up the inside again. Slightly little laggy bumps. The, <laughs> the Carlton sorts him out with a little bit of a correctional bump. Mercedes has outbraked himself and finds himself off in the grass. The Mustang's all over the curb. They're going three wide. This is like over 16th, 17th place. They're going three wide. Green Mustang is up the inside. He's going to get the pair of them as the Carlton's getting a bit of a slide. The Mustang doesn't quite get the drive off the corner. <laughs> now the Blue Mustang's doing a little bit of rally cross as well on the exit. Yeah, this is well outside the top ten. But they were still having some, uh, some good, interesting battles between them lot. At the front, and it was an Alpha 155 that had been leading the way. He had a huge margin after the first lap. He managed to avoid all of the chaos, pulled a huge gap back to the rest of us. But a, a silly mistake would drop him back into the clutches of a BMW as you run down towards turn one. The Alpha goes defensive but can't quite get it stopped in time. That leaves a big gap up the inside for the BMW to try and find a way past. But again, we see that fantastic Alfa Romeo traction off the corner as we go too wide up towards the Puddle of Doom with the back marker in front of you. That's never a good place to a BMW out wide. BMW in third is even more sideways and across the grass. In the end, the white E30 gets himself past as the Alpha is trying to use that traction again. Exactly the same manoeuvre we saw Alfred pull earlier on. Trying to use that traction out of the corner. He again gets himself up alongside, but he's stuck on the outside, not where he wants to be. Cuts back to the inside, goes for a big dive. Can't quite stop it. They both go sideways. We've got some uh, tandem drifting going on in uh, classic DTM cars towards the end of the lap. But that uh, would be the position for the E30, even if he does run a little bit wide into the next corner. And while all that was going on, a similar, a similar battle was unfolding further back in the field. Again, another Alfa Romeo versus BMW as we come down the start. Finish straight, have a guess which car is the quicker of the two in a straight line. Not by quite as much as we have seen with some vehicles, but still the BMW could get himself almost past before the corner, but the Alfa Romeo is going to fight him. The BMW bouncing across the horrible curves on the inside here if you get things wrong. The uh, Alfa has got the traction around the outside, and guess where we're going to be going too wide yet again? I think maybe there we go. The BMW can just get himself ahead as we go through the puddle of doom, both of the cars uh, being quite heavily affected through that uh, that corner you're too wide through the puddle of doom is not a too wide through that corner normally is not a good thing especially when there's not as big a puddle as that again we see exactly the same pace where the alphas were getting such fantastic drives the bmw gets caught on the inside hits a puddle goes sideways and that would allow the alpha Romeo straight back past see that one corner there those four-wheel drive alphas were really uh, really making the most of it at the front though it was the bmw that was going to go and take victory a clean sweep of victories for the M3s. Wasn't a clean sweep of podiums though. Alphas would claim second and third in this particular round. Amusingly, the Lotus Carlton, my, my Carlton, that uh, was quite a lot of a speed car, wasn't the best handling vehicle, would get second fastest lap. Only one of two cars into 1 minute 16s around that circuit. I think I finished fourth in that one. So yeah, the track that I really feared the Carlton would struggle on, it was actually very, very quick. Quite scary to drive when you got it right very, very quick. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, some class DTMs. Honestly, I thought it would be much more of a battle between the e, uh, the Mercedes 190E sorry, and the E30s. I really thought we'd see those two uh, very quick cars. I know likes of the Mustang and the the Carlton. I mean, they were very slow it, comparatively in, in the real DTMs. Uh, they were kind of a little bit of oddball cars. I wanted to run the Carlton because it was cool. Uh, the Alpha is just struggled to build a good B-class one. They just don't seem to quite work. With the uh, with the Forza classes, I know the real Alphas dominated the um, the, the DTM at, uh, at their seasons. But uh, yeah, just trying to get one of those to work doesn't quite. In the rain, of course, the four-wheel drive was uh, a little bit better suited. But... Uh, 
uh, there we go. Anyway, that is it for this week's Fail Race versus the Community. The next one, we are going to be doing an open C-Class one. So any car in C-Class. If you would like to sign up and take part, then you can go to our forums. There will be a link in the description. This shall be taking place on Thursday, the 3rd of November, uh, December. Sorry. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.